Hey, what's up everyone? So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your own digital dash for a Nissan like OBD1 console port for 170 bucks or less. Um. So the first thing that we're gonna need is a console adapter. So you can get these off eBay for like 20 bucks. There's a serial cable that comes with it and then you need a serial to USB cable. And those are normally like five more bucks. So it's like 25 bucks total for this. Uh, and you can also get just a console port adapter to USB adapter and those are 20 bucks. Those should work as well. And the next three things that you're gonna need are a Raspberry Pi, which is hooked up right here. And then, which is, 30 bucks, I believe. And then a digital touch screen, uh, and this one's 80 bucks. Uh, it's really nice, it's really good, and it fits right into the dash, uh, the stock dash. And then you're gonna need a power supply unit here. So this one's made for cars, and basically uh, you connect a switched power, a 12-volt uh, power constant, and a ground. And this will tell the Raspberry Pi when to turn on and when to turn off. So those are kind of the four things that you need. Um, for the Raspberry Pi, how I have this set up, the display is connected with this display cable and some power wires here. I have the links for all this stuff in the description. The power here is connected, one USB cable to the display, one USB cable to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi pulls its power from this USB cable, and the display also pulls its power from this USB cable. These wires go into the car, so I have them uh, wired into just like the stereo power um, and ground. And then when the car turns on, this unit tells the Raspberry Pi to turn on, and the Raspberry Pi turns on. And then there's a USB cable that goes from the Raspberry Pi into the console adapter, and then the Raspberry Pi starts reading from the console and displays the dash on here. Let me show you what the dash looks like now. So this is what the dash looks like. Uh, it's running in kind of like test mode, so it's just incrementing the RPMs and the mile per hour. So this is the temp gauge over here. Uh, it shows the mile per hour right in the middle here, and then this is the RPMs. So you can read the RPMs up here as well. And there is another dash view right now as well, which is just showing numbers. So mile per hour, coolant temp, and RPMs. Right now the dash is fairly basic. Uh, this is kind of like all I need for my dash right now. There's a couple things I'm gonna be adding to it, which is uh, the ability to read check engine lights and then clear check engine lights um, and any other numbers that come up. So if there's some numbers that you'd like to see on here, leave a comment below and I'll add them. Now let's go through how to install uh, this on your Raspberry Pi. So basically you just need to set up your Raspberry Pi like any other Raspberry Pi would. Um, so there's a bunch of instructions online. I'll put a good tutorial in the description, but once you got your Raspberry Pi set up, I'll show you how to set up everything else so that it will be working. This is the uh, my GitHub for the console dash project. Um, and so I have the instructions instructions listed here and I'll have a link in the description to this. Basically just follow these instructions. You'll get everything working. If you have any trouble or anything, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email or write on GitHub. Um, I can try and help you out. So basically, your Raspberry Pi will be a fresh install probably. The first thing you need to do is probably expand your file system. So I think on default, Raspberry Pi only has like, only gives you, I don't know, five gigabytes or something, something small. So I've ran into the problem where it doesn't have enough space. So expand the file system. So you just do sudo raspi config in the terminal. The terminal, if you don't know, um, you can either go menu, accessories, and then terminal, or there's this little terminal icon here. And so this is the terminal. So you type in sudo raspi dash config, uh, enter. Then it pulls this up. Uh, so you choose option one, expand file system, and then reboot. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I already did that. The next thing you need to do is install Node. The program that we're using um, uses Node, and so it creates a server and then pulls all the information from the ECU from the server and then streams it to your web page. So you're going to do sudo apt git update just to update Raspberry Pi. That should install some updates. And then you are going to sudo apt git upgrade, and then you sudo apt git install node.js and npm. Uh, and again, all these instructions are here. So you run those and that will install node.js no and npm. The next step after that is to install Chromium. There is a browser here that uh, comes default on the Raspberry Pi, but it just is not, it doesn't work very well. It's not very efficient. 
and so Chromium works a lot better. We're gonna install Chromium here, so you're gonna get the package and install it. So now the fun part is installing the Dash. So what we're gonna do is clone this Git repository. So you write Git clone and then the URL. So that, what that's gonna do is download this repo uh, onto your Raspberry Pi. Alrighty, so we've downloaded the repo. So now we need to go into the folder, which is just cd console dash, cd is changed directory. And now we need to npm install. So this will install a bunch of stuff that we need to run the actual server and run the app. Alrighty, so everything's installed now. So what we can do is, just to test it out, do npm run dev. And then what that will do is start the server. You can see it says server listening on port 8090. And so go ahead and open up menu, internet, and then Chromium web browser. And then go to localhost 8090, colon 8090. Uh, and then this is where you can see it running. And you can do F11 for full screen. Now you can see this is the like development or the test um, screen. And so you can see everything kind of working. So let's co close that with control W and set up the next step. So the next couple things are to make it one, turn on automatically when the car turns on uh, with that little power supply thing. And then two, uh, start the server when the car turn or when the dash turns on or the Raspberry Pi or the car turns on. Uh, and then also fire up the Chrome browser um, and uh, load the actual dash in full screen mode. So first thing we're going to need to do is go to this link mosberrycircuits.com pages car setup and this will tell you how to set up the Raspberry Pi to use the power supply. So basically you got to connect the cables to the right uh, ports. There's two leads on the power supply in and out which uh, are these two leads here and the pins are right here in and out. They're labeled on the power supply. You need to connect the out lead to GPIO 23, which is this one up here. White goes to out and you need to do the in lead to GPIO 24. So I have blue as in, which goes to this one here, and then white as out, which goes to this one here. And they have a little diagram here as well. Then what you need to do is on the actual Raspberry Pi, you need to install the script. Control C to stop the server here. And then we'll do w git and then this URL, http files mosberry circuit car setup.sh. Once you do that, you'll do sudo bash car setup.sh and that will install everything that you need for the power supply to turn the Raspberry Pi on. And then you sudo reboot. Once you do that, the power supply will work and turn on the Raspberry Pi when the car turns on and turn it off when the car turns off. And so then after that, we needed to do two more things, which is open the menu, go to preferences and go to default applications, uh, default applications for LX session, and then add these two entries to the auto start tab over here. So in this little input box here, it says add, we need to um, do at home pi console dash start script. .sh. And so this is a little start script that I set up to make the node server start and everything work when the car turns on and the Raspberry Pi turns on. And then after that, we need to add one more for the uh, Chrome browser to start up. And so you'll do at Chromium browser dash kiosk dash dash incognito and then file redirect page. Um, so all these commands are in the GitHub. And then once you do that, you should be able to restart the Raspberry Pi and hook everything up in your car. Now we'll go to the car and show you how I've hooked everything up. Alrighty, so here we are in the car now. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is hook up the console port adapter here. So with that, it is, this is a S14 and it's all the way down here by the fuse box. Here we are down here at the fuse box. And uh, where this port is can vary from car to car, but basically this is the port right here. Um, and so it was mounted over here um, and I just popped it off on the S14. Um, but you can also install this port yourself if you'd like on uh, Nissan cars. And I'll throw a link in the description to a offbeat garage video where he's doing a similar digital dash and he actually soldered in his own port on his S13 
Um, so if you want to do this on a different car, uh, you could, if you don't have a consult port, then you can solder one in. Um, so basically, let's connect this port up now. And then this is my serial cable. So with this, I just have the console port adapter going right there. And then I put my fuse box cover right back on and then you can't see anything. So up here you can see I have the wires for the uh, serial to USB adapter here, just zip tied up. And then I string the USB cable all the way up here. So this is where my dash sit, or my uh, digital dash sits, it's right here. Um, and so the next thing that we need are the power cables. I believe uh, this one, the yellow is switch power. The red is constant and then the black is ground. So let's go ahead and hook these up. All right, so we got those wires hooked up now. And so the last thing we need to do is hook up the USB cable to the actual Raspberry Pi. So the way that I've set up this little power adapter, it leaves enough room just for one USB port over here. All right, so that's all plugged in now. So everything should be plugged in and ready to go. So how I mount this is, luckily there's just enough room in the dash here. And this is upside down. I'm able to just wedge it in right in here. And then uh, the pressure, I put a little bit of foam on the corners and then the pressure um, just holds it in there. So let's go ahead and turn the car on and see how it works. So with the ignition on, you can see that it turns on automatically. So here's the dash. And uh, because the car hasn't started, um, we see zero RPMs or a mile per hour. So I'll go ahead and start the car now. And now here you can see the dash running. So it has RPMs and then it also has the mile per hour, but we're standing still. Uh, and then also the temp gauge. And so when you end up turning off the car, um, you can see the Raspberry Pi turns off automatically here as well. And so here it is still on and now it's turning off. So this screen just does that all the time, but it's completely off now. And so then your battery won't be wasted. So I'm using this as my full-time dash now. Um, basically, it's very similar to kind of like those race packs or whatever, but it's way cheaper. Um, and I like it because I was able to design my own dash and things like that as well. Um, again, kind of the one of the downfalls is the boot up time it takes a while. Um, it doesn't seem to bother me uh, just because by the time I start driving, it's on and working. Um, so that's cool. And then I can throw in like some neat features or whatever. Um, that I want like when the RPMs get above 6500 uh, the RPM little like meter turns red so that I know uh, I'm approaching the limit and things like that. So if you have any feature requests or anything let me know in the comments um, and if you end up doing this yourself too let me know and uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Bye.